What is the best way to learn story creation, and where do most books on writing fail? I'm Doug Leffler, and welcome to StoboDart. All right, bear with me. I want to begin by giving a brief lesson on directing actors. You want to avoid what we call result direction. Don't tell an actor to be happy or angry or proud or in love. Now, why is it wrong to direct by defining the result you want? Because it leads to superficial performances. Acting is not being, acting is doing. To get a more convincing performance, give your actor something to do. Now, this action may be as simple as a thought process, so instead of telling them to be sad, say, think about the day your puppy died. Okay, so this is an oversimplification of the method, but this approach leads to more honest performances. Now, the same approach applies to writing. Give your story something to do rather than something to be, such as to pit old friends against one another. And when you're learning to create narrative, instead of focusing on being a writer, give yourself a series of manageable tasks to complete. So give yourself something to do rather than something to be. Uh, An example of a manageable task is to write down five reasons why those old friends might be fighting. Most popular books on writing take an analytical approach to this subject, so they examine successful novels and screenplays and break down what makes them work. There is value in analysis, but it is limited. It's like analyzing a great performance and guessing what the actor went through to create it. More to the point, it assumes that with enough knowledge you should be able to replicate other people's successes. If that were true, after writing Chinatown, Robert Town should have been able to write other screenplays that were equally successful. To date, that hasn't happened. The wonderful and terrible thing about art is that no one knows if something's going to work until you put it before an unbiased audience. You can follow all the rules of dramaturgy and produce something that's dead on arrival. And you can break all the rules and create a work that touches the heart and leaves an indelible mark. Now that said, I always recommend that you learn the rules before you break them. Another issue is when people have a goal-oriented approach to writing. They don't write to learn writing or out of a joy of wordsmithing. They create a story with an agenda to make them money or provide an opportunity. Now, of course, sometimes lightning strikes, and someone's first project will be a huge success. But lightning strikes are rare, and you have less than one in a million chance of it hitting you. Trying to write a successful screenplay is like giving yourself result direction, which is probably why Hollywood has so many dishonest scripts. Creating something out of nothing is complex, and all humans need a tailored approach. What works for me is unlikely to work for you. So if reading Sid Field's book, Screenplay, motivates you to write a screenplay, that's a good thing, if you don't get discouraged when it doesn't sell. Just remember, the best way to learn to write is by writing, and writing a lot. Of all the books I've read on writing, the best advice I ever got was given to me by the great American science fiction author Ray Bradbury, who I first met when I was still in high school. He told me that he had a sign over his typewriter that read, Don't Think, and every day he would go to his office and write a short story with no idea beforehand what it would be. By the end of the month, he would have about 20 of them. 17 of these, he said, were crap. Two were okay, and one was good, and that one he would polish and send to his publisher. Accepting that most creative projects fail is liberating. It frees you from the misconception that you can beat a story into submission. Robert Towns wrote many screenplays, but he only had one Chinatown, which is one more than most of us have. Remember, you are not trying to write a great story. You are trying to find it amongst all the other ideas that don't entirely fall into place. Start writing today. In future videos, I hope to discuss three-act structure and character development, but to get started, you only need three prompts, objective, obstacle, and ticking clock. Write something short, just long enough to have a character overcome an obstacle to get something they desire within a finite amount of time. Oh, and if you're wondering how I met Ray Bradbury when I was a teenager, well, I went about it in the most logical manner possible. I wrote him a respectful letter, I told him how much I admired his work, and at the bottom of it, I drew a triceratops. It always works.